S20 FE. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Hi gang. S20 FE was launched in January this year, and when it was launched, it was so confusing. You know that. The thing was, after a prolonged delay, the next generation phone S22 was just about a month away. So the market reaction was like, man, what's going on? Isn't it too late for Samsung to launch this right now? What's the aim? And the pricing was out too. It was priced at $699 and in this price range, there were many other options. Pixel 6 from Google was priced at $599 so it costs $100 less and there were many other competitors from China. All things considered, this was not a competitive smartphone at the time of launch given the pricing and the timing. But that doesn't mean this phone is still not competitive after 8 months and I will tell you why in this video. Do you know what's more confusing than the retail price of S21 FE? Around 98% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel. Join my channel today and you will see this small YouTuber growing to become a star techtuber tomorrow. Why tomorrow? Because today is almost over. Your subscription does a lot more things than you think, so let's make a nice tech community together. Now back to review. My review model today is 128 gig storage with 6 gigs of RAM in white color and there are other color options like olive, graphite, and lavender. It has Snapdragon 888 inside and in the US and European market, you will get the same Snapdragon 888. Usually, Europe gets Exynos, but this time, Samsung gave Snapdragon to the European market. In other regions like Asia, you're gonna get Exynos 2100, the same chip that was in S21, and that makes S21 FE less attractive. And one funny thing is, although this phone is made by a Korean company, it was not released in its home country. This is not the first time Samsung did this, and whenever this happens, it feels like Samsung cares less about its home market. Maybe Samsung wanted to push S22 more in its home country. This brings an interesting point that even Samsung didn't want to sell this phone as many as it could. Anyways, let's get started with a quick unboxing. In this compact box, there isn't much stuff inside. The phone is wrapped in plastic and under the phone, there is a SIM ejector tool, USB-C cable, some paper, but no power brick. And that's all we got in the box. Then let's talk about the design first. It has the same design language as S21 except for the camera area. The camera has the same control cut design that Samsung has been pushing since S21, but it doesn't have any frame. It's just one piece of plastic bag that covers the camera and the whole body. This doesn't create that premium look, but in my opinion, it looks more simple and clean. The camera bump is less protruded because um, there is no extra part around the camera. And the frame that is surrounding the body is made of aluminum and it is slightly rounded. Thanks to its plastic bag, S21 FE is pretty light. It weighs only 177 gram or 6.24 ounce. And size wise, it's not too small nor not too big. Here is my iPhone 12 Pro, S21 FE, Pixel 6, and S22 Ultra. I think iPhone 12 Pro is a little bit small for content viewing these days, and S22 Ultra is way too big to handle with one hand. S21 FE and Pixel 6 are almost the perfect size for me to use daily. But thanks to the smaller bezel, S21 FE has the same size display as the Pixel 6, although it is a bit smaller. As I mentioned earlier, in the US and European market, S21 FE has a Snapdragon 888 inside and the chip was a flagship processor last year. Now we have Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and 8 Plus Gen 1, and these brand new chips are way faster than 888 in terms of benchmark score, but in real life, 888 is still a very snappy and capable processor. It delivers pretty much everything you ask and you won't feel any slowdown in daily life. And gaming is super smooth and snappy too. You can play League of Legends, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty, and many other games without any kind of lag. I play League of Legends a lot and S21 FE doesn't give me one single frame drop. You're gonna have a nice gaming experience with this phone no matter what you do. And you know, a smartphone camera heavily relies on a processor for computational photography and 888 delivers flagship level photos. 
with 12 megapixel wide and ultra wide, 8 megapixel telephoto, and 32 megapixel selfie camera, the number of pixels doesn't sound impressive, but the photo quality is awesome. You will never be disappointed with the camera, especially when you shoot night or portrait photos. For portrait mode, edge detection and background blur looks natural and amazing. I have tested a lot and it makes a satisfying result. And night mode makes literally day and night difference. It creates a totally different image even with the minimal amount of light. Here are some night photos and as you can see, it makes a huge difference. I am impressed and satisfied with the result and as you can see, it doesn't have that much noise. And the food mode is fun to use. It makes the food pops out and looks more yummy. Plus, this phone has a dedicated zoom lens that supports up to 3x optical zoom. Compared to digital zoom, optical zoom lens makes a way better image. It captures more detail and the image is not mushy like digital zoom. If you like to shoot an object like an animal from a distance, you will love this 3x optical zoom lens. For ultra wide photos, you can shoot any angle between 0.5x and 0.9x, so this is definitely a plus and makes you shoot more creative ultra wide shots. On top of these fun and useful features, there are many more features in the basic camera app, including object eraser in case you want to get rid of something in your photo. One caveat is that there is no dedicated macro mode, but you can still take a macro shot when you get close enough to an object, so nothing to worry about here. Overall, the combination of the triple camera and Snapdragon triple eight gives us an awesome and fantastic photography experience. And the display is, as Samsung always does its best for its display, so, so satisfying. It is 6.4 inch dynamic AMOLED, 120Hz display with HDR10 plus support. It gets bright enough to use even under strong sunlight, and HDR support makes the viewing experience more dynamic. And Gorilla Glass Victus is protecting the display, and this is the same glass that was used on S21. So, unlike S20 FE, which had Gorilla Glass 3 instead of Gorilla Glass 6 on S20, S21 FE got a full spec glass from S21. One thing I should mention is that the display is completely flat, but the bezel is slightly rounded. This is very, very subtle, so it is hard to see even after using it for a while, but when you roll your finger on the bezel, you can definitely feel it. But again, it is a completely flat display and the rounded area is only for the bezel. And this fantastic display comes with 4500 mAh battery. I did a real life battery test as I usually do for my review and the battery life is just what I expected. For YouTube viewers, you will have over 8 hours of playtime with 4K content at half brightness and volume. And for a gamer like me, I got 5 hours of playtime on League of Legends with another 5 hours of screen of time. For average users who do internet browsing, photos, and a little bit of YouTube, you will get 1 day and 20 hours. And when this phone is in standby mode, it becomes very efficient. It consumed almost no battery for about 11 hours of idling and I think these results show that battery life is decent. To charge this battery, you can do 25W fast charging or 15W wireless charging. With 25W charging, it takes 1 hour and 60 minutes and with 15W charging, it takes 1 hour and 32 minutes from 5% to full. And Samsung claims it takes 30 minutes to get to 50%. I can't pass this without testing it myself and I got 52% in 30 minutes using 25 watt. It also supports reverse charging and this will be convenient when you need a quick power source for your other devices. And just like other flagship models, it supports DEX and IP68 dust and water resistance makes this phone feel more secure in daily life. Last but not least, since this phone was launched in January this year, it gets the new software update policy from Samsung, which is 4 years of Android update and 5 years of security update. You will get Android 16 till 2026 and security update till 2027. There's no other Android brand that offers this kind of software support, so in this department, Samsung clearly dominates.
Then let's talk about the things that I don't like. I've got three major complaints about S21 FE and I think all of you will agree with my points. But first of all, let me talk about one minor complaint first. The fingerprint sensor. It is located almost at the bottom of the display and taking my thumb down here to unlock my phone is not convenient. I gotta twist my hand a little bit to get my thumb down on the sensor and it would be much better if the sensor was placed a little bit higher, like here. And this is an optical sensor and sometimes it fails to read when a finger is wet or has some dust on it. It's not a deal breaker, but I wish it had an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor like S21. But in all fairness, I think I wouldn't have complained about this if I hadn't had any experience with ultrasonic sensor. For an under-display optical fingerprint sensor, it is pretty responsive and snappy, but I prefer the ultrasonic sensor because it doesn't fail even when my finger is wet. It's like when you're used to more advanced technology and found out that that is more convenient, then you don't want to go back. Now let's talk about my real complaints. My first major complaint is that the Snapdragon 8 gets hot pretty fast. I play League of Legends for about 15 minutes and I could feel it getting hot already. I didn't experience any frame drop but my gaming experience drops like a rock because holding a hot device with my hands wasn't pleasant. I could understand at this point why people call the AAA Fire Dragon, not Snapdragon. To be fair, this test was done in the summer so the weather didn't do any good to cool the phone down. And now the weather is getting cooler and it doesn't get hot as fast as it did in the summer but it gets hot eventually after prolonged playtime. I personally think, although I don't like AAA getting hot quickly, the chip has a lot of benefits than its downside because the chip offers a bunch of computing power. It's just, I wish it didn't get hot this fast. And the second major complaint is that S21 FE doesn't have a SD card slot. Samsung has been excluding SD card slot since the S21 and S21 FE couldn't dodge this. This is understandable because FE edition follows suit with what the original S series does. But no one can deny how useful SD card slot is and since FE stands for fan edition, Samsung could have made its fans happier by including SD card slot in this device. We gotta buy storage from Samsung by paying 17 bucks more to get the extra 128 gig storage and 2 gigs of RAM. It's not unreasonable and crazy price but still, I'd like to have my choice to have SD card. And my last complaint is the odd pricing. It was launched at an extremely uncompetitive price of $699.99, virtually $700. The problem was, there were lots of better options in this price range. Pixel 6 was a strong contender with a $599 price tag or you could get the regular S21 at a discounted price. Besides, there were tons of other options from Chinese brands. So I think it absolutely didn't make any sense to launch this phone at $699 unless you're gonna offer a significant discount in the future. As you know, Samsung always gives a discount at some point and S21 FE can be an extremely competitive phone with a decent discount. For example, on the last Prime Day on Amazon, S21 FE was on sale for $538. And this was not the base model but the 256 gig storage model with 8 gigs of RAM and it was just a bargain. For 538 bucks, you get Snapdragon 888 which is an oldie but goodie, triple camera, a nice display and the longest software support. And basically, you get the last year's flagship spec phone at a budget price. The price is one of the major complaints but with a decent discount, it can make this phone extremely attractive and competitive. And I see Galaxy on sale quite a lot these days so it won't take too long to get a deal price on this phone. Black Friday and the year-end holiday sale season is not far away so I think there could be a major discount event on S21 FE in the near future. In short, S21 FE has still a powerful Snapdragon 888, a fantastic display, and triple camera with a dedicated zoom lens, clean design, long software support, DeX, wireless and reverse charging, IP68, and it is light and compact. 
it could have been better with SD card slot and the retail price brings a lot of questions but with a decent discount this can be a killer phone and I really love it well that's because I bought it at a deal price but seriously I love this phone so much and I decided to use this phone as long as I can maybe until 20 to 26 mm. I know that's not gonna happen and I'm probably gonna change my daily driver very soon as tech tuber. Anyways, for longevity, having more RAM is always better than having less RAM and I got curious about what extra 2 gigs of RAM can do for performance. Guess what I did? I bought another S21 FE in S21 FE exclusive olive color but it has 8 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna compare 6 gigs of RAM to 8 gigs of RAM in my future video so that you can decide which model is the right choice for you. So please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for the future updates and if you have enjoyed this video, please like and leave a comment about what you think of S21 FE. The phone didn't get the limelight when it was launched for some legit reasons but I think it's worth buying at a discounted price. One thing that S21 FE really shines over its full flagship model S21 is it gets an Android update up to 16 while S21 gets Android 15. I think this is a big deal as someone who likes to have an up-to-date software on every electronic devices. No? It's just me? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Then thank you for taking your time to watch my video and as always, see ya!